you tell a great story about holding the Steely Dan tapes for Asia in the trunk of your car. Can you tell that story for the listeners? Well, I can now because nobody's going to fire me or, <laughs> or, or arrest me now. But um, yeah, there was a... Wait, is that Donald? <laughs> oh, Donald wouldn't do anything now. So one day we were um, had been working on the Asia album for like 10 and a half months. And that had been about a year for them because they started it earlier elsewhere. Um, but at the village, we'd been there for about 10 and a half months. So they were, they were kind of over budget and kind of over their time frame. And um, one day we casually walked into the control room and um, there were probably eight suits from Warner Brothers sitting there around uh -oh. Walter Becker who had gotten there earlier and, and he said, oh, glad you guys could show up and I just turned around and left the room going, whoops. <laughs> and uh, we'd been out playing basketball uh, waiting for Walter to show up. We'd gone over to the high school, Gary Katz, their producer, Roger Nichols, and Donald Fagan and me, just to shoot some baskets. If you knew those guys, imagining them shooting baskets is pretty hilarious. <laughs> but uh, we did that and then walked in, bouncing the ball down the hallway, and then um, walked in and saw that. And Donald had the ball, and he turned around and threw it at me. I grabbed it and <laughs> he it. hot tailed it out of that room. And two hours later... I got called into the room. I can't believe this. But um, they said, okay, what Warner Brothers wanted to do, they said, you've had enough time, you're taking too long, we're going to take the tapes and have somebody else mix them. Wow. <gasps> yeah. And so that wasn't going to happen. Yep. So their bright idea, and I went along with it, was, um, okay, every night I would load the two-inch masters into the trunk of my little Toyota Corolla. And uh, yeah, and there's speakers in there. You know, speakers have magnets. Oh, my God. Yeah, didn't even think of that. Um, drove them home every night and then drove them back um, every day in case uh, somebody came to the studio and said they wanted to take the tapes. Nobody would know where they were. Well, if you think about it, who's the first person they would ask? Where'd those tapes? Where'd the tapes go, Lenise? And uh, of course it'd be me. Of course I'd know. And that's that's major theft. Yeah. Um, I look back at it now and go, <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> and you never do that. Um, but I think the village would have had my back, but that's not who would have arrested me. Um, except the village would, you know, I don't know what would have happened. Thank goodness I didn't get caught. And we ended up mixing the record and everything went fine. But I would take it, it was for a couple of weeks. What was the vibe like during those sessions where, um, were they really focused and like working all the time? Did it feel like a study of music or was it like a lot of breaks? How, how were those sessions? Are you talking about the uh, Asia sessions? The Asia sessions. Oh, intense, yeah. intense. Um, not a lot of small talk mm -hmm. with Donald and Walter and, uh, or Gary Katz. Or Roger Nichols, the engineer. I mean, he was probably the most social out of all of them. But uh, no, they they talked a little bit. You'd get right into it. And um, it took me almost, oh, maybe up to two months to feel really comfortable around them, understanding that because I'm, I'm a pretty social person and other sessions had been more social. And, and, uh, and they just weren't. But... I got to be good friends with them yeah. individually. Um, and then they probably opened up. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just the way they were. I just understood it better. Uh -huh. um, and <laughs> no. you, didn't, you just didn't take it personal at that point? Um, no, I wasn't intimidated um, after that. I just, you know, that's just who they are, yeah. or who they were. And so it's funny when I, I see an interview with them or I just saw Steely Dan at the uh, Hollywood Bowl and for Donald to be doing banter in between songs, it just cracks me up because it doesn't, that's just not his comfort zone. Yeah. Once he's playing and, and doing all that stuff, he's, you know, perfectly happy, but, but the small talk in between <laughs> doesn't do that. So, you know, that's not him. 
so it was uh, uh, it was great, but it was intense, and they were, as Donald would say, I don't want it perfect, I just want it right. Yeah. And that's both of them. And together, and with Gary Katz, I mean, it was, there are a lot of overdubs, and they basically wanted to get the drum track, because mm-hmm. they could overdub anything else after yep. that, so... Which the drums sound incredible, incredible on that album. Yeah, yeah. Well, learned. I learned a lot. Well, I learned things from Roger the Immortal Nichols. Like, don't let your mic cables touch, and yeah. use the shortest mic cables you can. All of that minutia mm-hmm. that you think, and eh, nobody's going to hear, or that doesn't make any difference. It does. Ultimately, you know, when people say, "Why does uh, a Steely Dan record sound so good?" It's those reasons. The attention to detail. Well, and to know just the crossover things, the little things that will make the difference. Mm -hmm. Well, so many people think you're not going to hear that stuff, and I don't know if people today even care, but but we did back then. What was it like working with uh, Larry Carlton? Oh, great. I mean, he's, you know, such a joy. Well, everybody on their sessions was, there was there were no slouches ever. All assassins, ever. every single one of them. Every single one, so it was always a pleasure. And then when I found out that uh, they were coming in and I was asked if I wanted to work with them, that I was warned it's going to be a long time. So you may not want to work that long with them, but it'll be probably the best record you ever do. Who told you that? The studio manager did, Dick LaPalm, who was in charge. Uh, he told me that <laughs> um, after a particular session. I think I've shared this with you. It's one that people ask me about. What was the most intense session uh-huh. with Steely Dan? And um, it was for a song called Home at Last. Mm-hmm. And there is a bit on there where it goes, da 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 Well, the... Danger on the rocks is surely past. Well, the, well, the. This, this is going to tape. And so the phrasing of that particular, those two words was critical mm-hmm. to Donald's happiness with how <laughs> the song went. Because he had to sing it. And he hated singing. Mm-hmm. He said, I, I can't stand it. Get Barry Manilow, get Barbara Streisand, get somebody else. I can't do this. Um, and he didn't like how he sang, but he couldn't find anybody who could sing what he needed to have sung or for his music. So he had to do it. And so, so vocal sessions were really tough. Yeah. Just because he were was they hard suffering. On themselves? He was oh, hard on himself. He, he was so hard on himself. He would jam his hands in his pockets till his knuckles bled. Oh, wow. Yeah, because he was just, Gary Katz would um, find a relaxant pill. Of some sort, uh, we called it Jerko Jesus. It was Percodan. Give him a Percodan, and he would. Just ready to go. <laughs> well, he'd he'd settle down, and then they would, and we, then we could all relax a little bit. But um, so it was, <laughs> you know, it was it. There wasn't a lot of play in their sessions. So this one where well, except the, for basketball, the basketball. <laughs> God, that I mean, that was so out of character. It, was, it cracks me up to think about it. Um, but the session with well the, well the so, um, the sessions each day usually lasted four to six hours. Uh-huh. So on Monday we start well the, well the. It happens about three or four times in the song. I can't remember exactly, but um, every time you'd hear da 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 punch well the mm-hmm. punch out and. Um, Again, da 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 da. Well, the punch in and out. Again, so the first night we did the melody. Well, the, well, the. Mm-hmm. Tuesday night we doubled the melody. Well, the, well, the. So it had to be exactly like the other yep. one. Wednesday, well, the, well, the. The oh, harmony. Man. Thursday. We doubled the harmony. Um, after that, I was having nightmares. Yeah. Uh, well, the, well, the. And so I went upstairs to the studio manager's <laughs> office. I was like, I can't do this. It's well, the, 
well, the, well, the, this is, I'm having nightmares, I can't take it. And he goes, you get back down there and you work on that record, says it's going to be the best album you've ever done. <laughs> 